Hi, my name is Megan and I'm an educator at the Long Beach Museum of Art. I am so excited to create with you today. We are going to be making some watercolor resist paintings. So I have just a few examples so you have an idea of what we're working on. Basically, we're going to be using something to create a texture when we rub on it with a crayon. So in this example, I used some leaves to create the texture. And then we're going to paint over it with watercolor to really make it pop. This example, someone used some more abstract textures. This kind of looks like something you could find on the street, or maybe there's some bricks or other textures in your space that you want to explore. And again, you can see how different colors of crayon react differently with the watercolor. So you can really see the blue crayon against the green, but you can't see the green crayon as much against the green paint. So when we're at that point, you can be exploring um, how different colors interact. The first step is to gather your materials. So you are going to need some paper. I'm using watercolor paper. You can use different kinds of paper. If you don't have any watercolor paper, it might curl up a little bit, but that's okay. You can just flatten it out. You're also going to need some crayons, some watercolor if you have it. You can also just use the crayons and make some crayon rubbings if you don't have watercolor in your space. And then you're going to need something to make the texture. So I have some leaves and sticks that I found when I went on a walk. And I also have these kind of texture plates. This one has a spider web on it and it has, it's raised so that when I rub the crayon over it, it's going to show up. So if you need a moment to gather your materials, go ahead and pause the video. And if you're ready, let's start creating. So I'm going to start with a leaf. This leaf I found when I was going on a walk and I thought it would be great for a rubbing because it's pretty thick. Super soft leaves, they'll just get squished. Um, but this one feels pretty tough. And when you're making your rubbing, you're going to put whatever you're rubbing, whether it's a leaf or something else that has a texture you want to pick up, you're going to put it underneath your paper. So I'm putting my leaf on the table and then I'm putting my paper right over it. You'll notice it doesn't lay flat, so you can either hold it down yourself you can also have someone help you out and hold the paper, or you can tape it down if you don't have anyone around to help you out. That will work just fine. And then we're going to use our crayons to make our first rubbing. So I'm going to use a green. It can be helpful to use the flat side of the crayon like this. Um, if you have some that have paper on them, maybe you can ask if you can peel it off. Otherwise, I would hold it like this, but having more of an angle is going to have help your texture show up. And when you're rubbing with your crayon, you're going to press pretty hard, maybe harder than you think you need to, for your texture to really show up, for the shape of your, your leaf or maybe just the pattern of whatever you're rubbing to show up. So you'll see that center stem is showing up really well and mine actually slipped a little bit and it kind of made two stems which I think looks cool so it can move around sometimes when you're rubbing on accident and you see the outside edge as well and I kind of have this spillage from my crayon that's okay so I'm gonna take my leaf out this is what my first rubbing of a leaf looks like and now I'm going to try out this stick here that I have. I picked this stick because it has all these kind of knobs on it that I thought would make a cool texture. And I'm also going to pick another color crayon. You could use the same color crayon over and over if you wanted to, or you can explore using different colors. And again, I'm just going to rub my crayon over my texture, my stick. And you can overlap your crayon rubbings. I'm going to do a few with the stick. So you can see I put this stick right through the leaf. Um, 
you can do that or you can explore on your own. I'm going to do, now I'm going to use this spider web, this texture plate. Again, I'm putting it under it. And I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just kind of doing the corner because I think it looks like a spider lives here. And I'm going to use some red for the spider. And for this crayon, I'm just going to hold it at an angle because it has the paper on it. So that's how the spider web looks. I'm gonna fill up my whole page with crayon rubbings. So if you wanna do that and you feel like you need a little bit more time, you can pause the video here. You don't have to fill up your whole page though if you wanna just have a few. So now that I've finished filling up my page with crayon rubbings, I'm ready to add some watercolor. And when you're thinking about what color paints you want to use, maybe think about picking some contrasting colors because they can really pop. So I'm going to put some green paint over my red spider web because those colors are high contrast colors, and I think it's gonna look pretty cool. And you'll notice when you add the watercolor paint over the crayon, it's gonna pull away from your crayon lines because water resists wax. And that's why we can just paint right over our crayons. We don't have to worry about them disappearing. So there's my spider web with some green added and it's making the red lines pop. And you can spend as much time as you want picking the watercolor colors that you wanna add I like to fill in the different sections with different colors, but you could also just paint right over the whole thing if you wanted to explore that instead. So if you wanna pause your video and spend a little bit of time painting with your watercolors, go ahead. All right, so I've filled up my whole page with watercolor. Here's how my turned out. I was exploring using red and green. I like the way some of the colors are contrasting against one another. If you did this project with someone else, maybe you can share your creations with each other. And maybe you wanna hang your finished watercolor resist paintings up. I also, have used them before to make cards. So if you want to make some cards to send to someone, that could be a fun way to use your creations. I hope you enjoyed making these projects with me today, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.